Ladies and gents, welcome back once again, All Things Covered, with Patrick Peterson and, of course, Bryant McFadden. BMAC is what everybody calls me. It's a great opportunity to tap into some Minnesota Vikings football with our very own number seven. Oh, by the way, I will talk about this throughout our show. The Pro Bowl voting is now up and live. So if you're rocking with the show, if you're rocking with the Minnesota Vikings, if you're rocking with Pat Pete, or if you're just rocking with quality sound, football play in the defensive backfield, make sure you go out and vote for our very own Pat Peterson. And we're not just telling you to vote because you're biased because of being fans of our show. We're telling you to vote because this man is deserving of having votes in his favor. One of the best to do it right now when you talk about cornerback play, creating PBUs, interceptions, Things like that, man. Make sure you can go out and give my guy a vote and make sure you hit him with the hashtag Pro Bowl Vote. That's the unique hashtag Pro Bowl Vote for P- our very own Pat Peterson. And also, too, sure. uh, what we can do, we can throw other. We might give out a few a few items if you show proof that you voted for our guy, Pat P. And if you told a friend to tell a friend, tell a friend, tell a friend, we might do that as well. But Pat P, man, it's a great day. To be a part of Skull Nation is a great day to be a part of the Minnesota Vikings. The Vikings improved to nine and two currently on the season. Huge Thanksgiving victory for all you Thanksgiving lovers out there. You got a chance to get filled up with great food, food, and you got a chance to see the nightcap game of the week Thursday night. Basically, the Minnesota Vikings taking care of the business against the New England Patriots. Recap: his Final score was 33-26. Pat P. I was all the way off, but I was I was dead on. And predicting who was going to win, right? Yeah. I had nine. That you have been all season. Say it again. That you have been all season. I've been no question. I've been dead on right now all season long. So it's safe to say if I've been better on the Minnesota Vikings, just straight up, huh, I'm definitely in the green, not in the red. Uh, Pat, people, what was your day like leading up to the game? Because that was your first time ever playing on Thanksgiving. Yeah, it was honestly, it was basically how it went throughout the the years I've been playing in the league, you know, you always have like a, a earlier practice than usual so you can get home and eat some food and, you know, enjoy the family time and just that and other than you have your fast Friday. But this one was a little bit different, you know, uh, slept at the hotel, woke up the next day, you know, had a little meeting with the, uh, with the team, got home, rest up a little bit, had some, uh, thanks early Thanksgiving, um, uh, I guess you would call it a, a lunch, Thanksgiving lunch. Before hey, I, hey, I, I want to ask you this question, right? Well, granted, you didn't have the early game, but mm-hmm. were you able to really indulge in Thanksgiving food, like really eat? Granted, you played late at night. So I understand if you played at 1230, you can't really tap in and really enjoy yourself. But yeah. how was it for you in, in regards to the, the, the portions of food you were able to eat? I kept it kind of light because I'm not a real big eater before games anyway. I don't mm-hmm. know what it is. I never have like a real big appetite before a game. I don't know if I don't, I, you know, I don't know if it's a psychological thing that I don't want to feel heavy on the football field. But for the most part, I never have really have a big appetite um, before a game. So I, I kept it kind of light. You know, I had some turkey, I had some stuffing, mm-hmm. uh, I had some mac and cheese. Also, I wanted to keep it nice and clean to where I didn't mess up my stomach as well. So yeah, yeah. I had to make sure I kept it PG-13. And, um, I was able to to do that for sure and um, keep everything down to after the game. <laughs> no doubt. No doubt. Let's start with a important moment in that ball game, third quarter action. Uh, the Hunter Henry non-touchdown that was a controversial one. Uh, what was your opinion on those on, on that play? Because he felt like coming from Hunter, Hunter Henry, he said, I believe I caught it. He said it was it hit the ground, but I believe I had my hand un, under the ball. The hand was under the ball with hitting the ground. That's what kind of caused it to jump. They made the call, just got to live with it. Of course, people coming from the New England side of things said it was a catch, came out to be incomplete. What yeah. were your thoughts on basically a game-changing like play because they had to set up for three points instead of seven? Uh, what year was that Des Bryant had that catch against, um, well, the non-catch? That was, could have been 2016, 2017. I'll even take it one step further for you, Pat P. The Patriots, the Patriots have the audacity to complain and say that was the wrong call. But I remember a few years ago in Pittsburgh, 
they were able to benefit off a call just like that when the tight yeah. end for Pittsburgh, uh, what was his name? Um, tall, tall guy, Jesse James. Jesse James had a catch. It was the same, almost the same action as Hunter mm-hmm. Henry in completion. I didn't see the Patriots <laughs> complaining in. <laughs> I didn't see them never complain if they're on the wrong end of the stick, if they're on the right exactly. end of the stick. Exactly, exactly. But yeah, but that Dennis Brown, I think, was like 2016, something like 2016, 2017. Yeah, I felt like um, it was a close call. 2014, 2014. Yeah, I felt like it was a close call watching on the film, on the, uh, you know, live action. I thought he caught the ball. But going back and, you know, with the uh, the great camera people that we have in the NFL that does a great job of having so many angles, um, you can you, you can kind of have make a, a a a very educated guess saying that mm-hmm. that ball is just the ground for sure, you know. So, you know, just uh just you know just so happened that you know that was a big play in the game. Those guys end up getting three and not seven. Um, but I think the refs made the right call at that time. I agree with you. I don't have an issue with it because by the letter of the law, that's the right call. Yep, that's the right call by the letter of the law. So I, I don't have an issue with it. But of course. When it's not going your way, you will complain. And I'm not surprised to hear some of the complaints that came from the Patriots side. You know, Pat P, we, we've consistently talked about Justin Jefferson and his greatness. Yeah. One thing I like about Justin Jefferson, his bounce back is so big. Last week against the Cowboys, didn't really do a lot. This past Thursday against the Patriots, he jumped right back into the forefront. Uh, but what truly separates him? as one of the best to do it early in his career. Currently, he has the most receiving yards in his first three seasons in the NFL, in NFL history, 4,164 yards and counting. So he's still adding to that resume. But, man, you've got a chance to see him up close and personal, uh, his daily routines, and just seeing him tear up people on game days, man. What what makes him so special? Uh, I mean, so many things make, make Justin so special. I, you know, just a couple of things that – to me, stand out being a teammate, seeing him day to day in the locker room, and just his work ethic. You know how determined he is to be great. You know you can see, you know the, you know the hard work and dedication that he puts into his game. You know that he worked on in the off season, each and every time it shows up on the, you know on tape on Sundays. But you know have an opportunity to see it since last year, mm-hmm. coming into year. Like I said, he took it to another level. You can just see the burning fire and desire in his eyes, you know, wanting to be a household name. And um, he, he, he's, de- he, he's definitely deserved that in his first three years being the NFL uh, history receiving uh, yards um, recipient. You know, mm-hmm. what I mean? that's, that's real big. You know, the league has been around forever and for him to be able to obtain that type of stat, um, within three years with all the greats, with the Randy Mosses and the Odell Beckhams and, you know, the list goes on and to be in that category and, and not let it phase him or change the way he go about his business is quite remarkable, man. I don't know if it's a, a LSU thing um, or it's a, or it's a um, Missy Lane and uh, and uh, Mr. John thing because they, they did a damn good job of, making sure that he never let things get too big. Like he's never, you know, the moment is never too big for him. You know, you can almost tell that he's been there before. And one thing I appreciate in regards to watching Justin Jefferson do his work on game day. Pat P, this is something that you oftentimes talk about in regards to receivers coming out of the ball game. If you guys pay attention to Justin Jefferson, it doesn't matter how many routes he runs, how many passes he catches, he's not coming out of the ball game. Mm-hmm. This man stays. He ain't doing this. <laughs> he ain't doing this, or he's not just removing himself. I've been watching him throughout his career, and especially last Thursday night against the Patriots. In, in critical moments, I mean, big-time catches, he's not coming out. He's eating every rep. Mm-hmm. Every rep. I don't know if there's another wide receiver in the National Football League that plays as many snaps and hopefully we can kind of get the information on this to see how accurate this is. I don't think there's another wide receiver that plays as many snaps as Justin Jefferson, because as you mentioned, Pat P, you talked about this in past episodes. Most wide receivers, they come out and take breaks. Yeah. They either they remove themselves. And it's not like coaches are telling them to come out. You know, they remove right. themselves and get a get a get a break here or there. Get some water, take a knee, you know, chill out. And then they'll come back in. Justin Jefferson ain't doing that. 
Mm -mm. He's not doing that, man. Guys in tip top shape and hats off to the, the way he prepares to be able to do that. Do you think, and we understand, let's keep it real. The MVP is basically a quarterback award, but do you think Justin Jefferson, could have his name sprinkled in that conversation, or should he? I think he should, but I think it's going to be hard just off the simple fact, like you said, it's a it's a quarterbacks and a running backs award, you know, which which sucks because you know you can go down on list, you know, by receivers. I felt that could have been you know worthy of a. MVP, you know, vote or even sprinkled in there. I, I can go with two receivers out, off the back, Randy Moss and Calvin Johnson. Hands yeah. down. The year Calvin Johnson had 2,000 yards and the year that Randy Moss had 21 um, touchdown uh, receptions. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No Although question. I know hey, the quarterback is – go ahead. I was about to say we got the updated numbers in regards to snaps. The only two wide receivers that have more snaps than Justin Jefferson is Scary Terry, Terry McLaurin, and mm -hmm. Michael Pittman Jr. They're yeah. ahead of him. So Justin is number three. But go ahead. Yeah. Um, and I just think, you know, having, you know, um, yeah, you made me lose my dang on train of thought. <laughs> <laughs> You're talking about uh, Calvin Johnson. Yeah, only only two receivers that I felt like, you know, that should have been in that, you know, the, in that category was Calvin Johnson. And Randy. Um, and Randy Moss, the mm -hmm. year that Calvin had 2000, the year, the year Randy Moss had 21. Um, touchdown passes, but we all know the quarterback is throwing those guys' balls, those guys the ball, but a lot of the time, the receivers are bailing the quarterbacks out. Yeah, You know what I mean? And the receiver has to catch the ball in order for the quarterback to get those stats. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So I think receivers, that's having a type of year that Tyreek is having, having the type of year that Calvin had and Justin is having right now, they should be at least considered for that, uh, for that, I, for sure. I agree, and I think based on what we where we see it now, Justin Jefferson actually has the best, some of the top odds for offensive player of the year. Uh, he has a much better shot in winning that award than MVP. But of course, he has to continue to ball out, and you guys got to continue to win. He's one hundred and one to win the, the the MVP right now. And at that time, you're talking about Moss in 1998. Moss had fourteen hundred and ninety three yards, twenty three touchdowns. Uh, 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 I'm sorry, in 2007, Moss had yeah. 98 for 14, 83, and 23 touchdowns. So Justin Jefferson mm -hmm. right now with an extra game, I think he has around 1,200. He's right behind Tyreek Hill in regards to receiving yards. Uh, clearly, he's a ways away from that 23 touchdown mark of Randy, but he probably will surpass Randy in regards to receiving yards. Pat P., being a former returner, former great returner yourself, Man, talk about your electrifying returner. Keenan, how you say his last name? Uh, you talking about Kane? Uh, Kane, yeah, Kane. In Wahoo, in Wahoo? Yeah, Kane, Wahoo. In Wahoo, in Wahoo? Yeah, somebody. Kane. We're going to just call him Kane. Yeah, we're going to call him Kane. <laughs> but talk about Kane. <laughs> and man, that big that big return he had because it was at that moment, that was so big because the Patriots kind of were taking some of the momentum away from you guys. Clearly, they had quiet down the stadium. And instantly, they, they didn't get a chance to enjoy the momentum they had in their favor because Kane just took it back to the house. But talk about, you know, what he's meant to your team and how special he is as a returner. Man, Kane is very, very, very special. You know, a running back that has great vision, great speed, um, and a guy that don't mind, you know, trying to run through tackles. You know, you have most guys that try to avoid – you know, uh, you know, uh, you know, tackles or guys who try, you know, to avoid contact. Kane wants all of that. You know, <laughs> he, he showed that um, not only, you know, Thursday night, but two more times before that. You know, I had the opportunity to see both of those returns before, you know, Thursday night football game. But, you know, what he brings to that uh, that special team unit, the kickoff return unit is uh, it strikes fear. You know, mm -hmm. and New England was playing with fire. They kept giving him chance after chance after chance. That's probably the most chances that he had um, in a ball game uh, consistently. And uh, we finally got him. We finally we finally sprung one free. You know, Coach Hat. you know, and the special team unit has been working extremely hard, you know, on getting, you know, one of those returns sprung, sprung for a touchdown, and we finally got one. Yeah, finally got one. It was huge. You definitely needed it. 
Uh, that was uh, dope for him to be able to do that. Uh, three kickoff return touchdowns in 22 games. Uh, leads the league in yards per return this year. So, man, Kane has really been balling. He might find himself in that Pro Bowl if he can, continues to do what he's been doing so far. Uh, break down your mindset. One, a play that a lot of people are not really talking about but was extremely important, Pat P., uh, was your tackle that kind of kept the runner inbounds and kept the clock running. So take us through that play in regards to knowing the situation and knowing that you had time on your side, but clearly they were trying to get out of bounds. Well, we are, you know, on the defensive side of the ball, we know in that situation, all the pressure is on the offense, you know, so you have to, as a defense, a player, you have to understand the situation, understand how much time is on the clock, understand mm-hmm. how many timeouts that they have, what type of plays they that they want to run to try to reserve some of that time. And we was in a perfect uh, defense. You know, I wanted to take away the deep shot first. You never want to give up a chunk mm-hmm. um, in those type of situations. You want to kind of play, you know, top down, let the ball bring you back down. You know, and I saw Matt, you know, he was looking for the big shot early because, you know, obviously they needed chunks to get in position to try to, um, you know, get in position to to throw a Hail Mary. Um, but, you know, taking away the deep shot and he had to come back down to his check down, um, threw the ball kind of high, which, which, which was in my favorite. And that's why, you, like Coach always say, you know, see the ball, react to the ball, especially yeah. when you're in zone defense. And I got a great beat on it, you know, broke on the ball very good. You know, try to beeline and beat the receiver out of bounds that I did. He tried to muscle. He tried to muscle his way out of bounds. And I, you know, it, every uh, 195 pounds of me um, kept him in bounds to keep that clock running. Vikings win. No question. Vikings win. Heads up play by our very own Pat Pete. Uh, uh, and, and talking about, you know, being heads up, man, you couldn't wait to eat. It seems like we, it was, <laughs> there was a, so many videos of you. You stole what you, you stole a turkey leg. While you were still on the football field, man, take us through that moment. And it seems like, man, you really enjoying yourself with this group of guys, especially after wins, man. What 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 happened in that in that, in that instance, uh, uh, in that sequence of play, not plays, but in that sequence when the game was over, you saw the turkey leg, you just went and got. And how did it taste? Because oh. from afar, it looks like those turkey legs be a little dry. Uh, how, how did it taste? You just answer your own question. Anywho, <laughs> <laughs> I had a, I had an opportunity. You know, I don't. First of all, I don't know how many how many more chances I'm gonna have to not only play in the league after this season. Although I want to play more, but God only God knows. You know, I'm yep. only one year contract, so next year is not promised to me. So I never played on Thanksgiving. Always wanted to play on Thanksgiving, and always wanted me a turkey leg. I wanted to make enough plays. The dog on me be up there interviewing, but yeah, you know, Matt Matt didn't want me to participate in the in the football game Thursday night, so um, I didn't have no action. So I ran it upon myself. I was like, man, since the quarterback didn't want to throw it my way, let me go up there and steal one my damn self, and it got me an old turkey. <laughs> it was a, a turducken. It was a, a turducken. Yes, yeah, a turducken. I, I believe that's what they said it was. It's like a turk and a duck and a duck. So it's a it's a turkey, chicken, and duck. Wow. Kind of mass together, I believe, but yeah. I did find out that was what uh, that is what a turducken is. I and you said out. it. You said it was dry. It's funny you said that because Adam Adam Thielen spit it out on live TV. So well, yeah. Hey, <laughs> I, I think first of all, they got they got to time it out the right way. They just yeah. can't cook all three turkeys at one time. Yeah, they have to make sure they cook that. Start cooking that sucker right before the game start. <laughs> yeah, so let, let it, let it and, or, and even if they kick it before, just you know, you can still keep some heat on it. No, keep man, a little, just keep, keep it. A, that's what that's that's why it's dry because they keeping the heat on it. Well, they got, but they got to wrap it too. Then they got to wrap it. You just can't have it heat with. No, it got to be wrapped. Put some. Yeah, but in if they and, if they going if they gonna do that, they gotta they gotta put it in a pan with some with some uh with some nice some nice butter, some oil to keep it nice and moist. So when it when the steam get in there, it's all circulating. You just can't put it in there by itself, <laughs> yeah. Matt. Yeah, they well, they got to do something because it looks like it's dry, and you said it is dry. So I guess that's why you were so open to giving what uh, Harrison Phillips. <laughs> oh yeah, because if it was good, if it was good, I would have been like a kid at Disneyland, cat. <laughs> <laughs> no question. That's why you gave it to me. He, but well, he's a, a, a lineman, so he can care less if it's dry or not. Oh yeah. 
yeah. O'Connor boy. <laughs> no question, no question. But he ate that. He, he ate it like a straight savage. Not surprised coming from a defensive lineman. But man, listen, you enjoy yourself, and and that's the thing about when you win ball games, everybody's happy, and, mm-hmm. and that's what you guys have been able to do. And let's see, can you keep that trend going this Sunday? With that being said, we about to take a break, pay a few bills, but when we come back, it's time to tap into what's next for the Minnesota Vikings. The New York Jets preview is up next. Stay tuned. Next up for the 9-2 Minnesota Vikings, the New York Jets. Jets, with they, they're 7-4. Nice win last week against the Jets beat. Uh, who did it beat last week? Chicago. Yeah, Chicago, without Justin Fields. Uh, before we get into the ball game, got some nice news for all you fans, all you listeners and viewers. Yours truly. Me, myself, and I will be at the game live. My first experience. Yes, sir. As a fan, because I played in Minnesota before, back in the old days when it you was the, the, back, metro, the, the Metro Dome. I think that was the name of the old stadium. They used to share yeah. the Minnesota Twins, the Metro Dome. I haven't been to the bank before. This is my first time. I'm excited. So for all you listeners and viewers that are listening to us or checking us out on YouTube, let me know I'm a fool guy. I'm a fool guy. I get there Saturday. I got a link with my guy, Pat P. But I, if there's any restaurants that I might need to tap into in the city, let me know. Of course, the Juicy Lucy Burger is something that people are already telling me to go out and try. I've tried before. But if you got any homegrown type spots, BMAC should go to. Let me know. And maybe y'all can meet me there as well. We can do something together. Maybe get on live and talk a little bit about the game. But I will be there. So what me, I would do be doing a pregame show in the stadium. Getting yep. you guys fired up. So make sure you check all of our channels. Everywhere you can find our podcast, we, you will hear me talking about what's expected in that ball game, 1 o'clock Eastern. And then after the game, our very own Pat P. You know, we're going to allow him to shower up, get fresh. And then he's going to join us as well to recap the show, talk about the experience. Man, we're bringing our home show on the road. That's on the road, do. baby. And we might get a guest or two. Who knows? You might get Justin Jefferson on. You might get one of Pat's teammates to join us as well for a quick little uh, Q&A. But that's what you guys need to look forward to. We're taking the show on the road. I get a chance to see this, the Skull Champ in person. Oh, yeah. In Great person. Time. Greatest see atmosphere the in the land, Mac. I'm telling hey, you. Amen. Hey, Amen. Like now, it. now listen, now you got to understand something, Pat P. I've been in some great atmospheres, man, playing in Pittsburgh and some of them big moments, man. So I I, I need to see yeah. the level uh, 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 of comparison in regards to what you guys have inside the dome compared to what I was experiencing my time in Pittsburgh. But I can tell you this much. Yes, this is a big game. It is. This is a big game. I mean, the Jets is a is a is a national brand, just like the Minnesota Vikings, both teams have pretty much exceeded the expectations so far, and both teams have their eyes set on a playoff spot. And with that being said, the New York Jets coming to town. Big news last week, benching first rounder, former first rounder Zach Wilson in favor of Mike White. I know you don't have a lot of tape on Mike White outside of what he did against the Chicago Bears last week, but it seems to be the offenses, they're more lively. When he's in the lineup, Garrett Wilson is a top wide receiver threat, just a rookie. But, Pat P., you've been around for such a long time. How do you embrace going going up against young guys with a lot of potential, like a Garrett Wilson or a, a, a Elijah Moore, who is a Broward County guy, by the way? Shout out to Broward County. Man, I embrace it, man, because, you know, that's what the game is. That's what the game is, you know, at, mm-hmm. at the end of the day. And if you have the privilege to play, you know, you know, double-digit career – you're gonna run into these young whoopersnappers. You know what I mean? You're gonna you're gonna you're gonna find these 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 young guys that that run four twos that can, you know, you know that can pretty much do anything imaginable. You know, at the receiver position. You know, mm-hmm. so for me, that's what keeps me young because that's what I look forward to 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 uh, to looking and look forward to going into each and every season. You know, seeing what young guys are going to stand out, you know, this year, what young guys going to make me, you know, work that much harder. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? So, um, you know, Wilson is a great receiver. Um, like you said, don't have much tight, um, uh, much tape on Mike. Um, but looking at the game last week, have had a very, very productive game. Can't I can't tell you. I think he threw, I think it was like 21, 21, 26, 300 yards, three touchdowns, mm-hmm. something like that. A very, yeah, very he, had, he had over 300 yards and three touchdowns. Yeah, um, they have a, a host of running backs that they want to use. Defense is very stout. 
you know, so they just needed a quarterback and wanted a quarterback, you know, in there that, like we talked about a couple of weeks ago, that's mm-hmm. not going to hurt the team. You know, that's yeah. that's not going to put the team in a bad situation because you just want to find a way to be in it in the fourth quarter, you know, because that's when it matters. That's when it mm-hmm. counts. You know, I always say the first three quarters is like makeup. I call it L'Oreal, you know, because at the end <laughs> of the day, it's all fine and Danny, but in the fourth quarter, we need to see, you know what I mean? We, if it's raining, if that mascara going to fall off, you know what I mean? It, no question. If, 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 that eye, if that eye shadow going to start uh, leaking off a little bit, you know, so at the end of the day, you know, um, you you want a quarterback that can that can that that can keep you in games and able to you know find ways to win you games when needed and might, mm-hmm. might you know might show great promises of promises of that last week. Yeah, and with that being said, talking about Mike White and his favorite target Garrett Wilson, Pat P. Check this out: when you entered the league, Garrett Wilson was in the sixth grade. <laughs> When you got drafted, Garrett Wilson was in the sixth grade, my guy. <laughs> Think about that. Yeah, I'm pretty man, sure you didn't great. know that. I'm pretty sure you wasn't aware of that. Uh, I was not aware of that. But, you know, with the young guys that we have in our locker room, you know, they remind me of, they remind me that every other day. So um, I wasn't, I, you know, I, I, I knew he wasn't too far behind um, because uh, my boy Tay, and uh, Lewis, Lewis Singh, you know, mm-hmm. they was like in elementary school, middle school when I when I was in the league, you yeah. know, so I hear it all the time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and speaking of another young stud for the Jets, <clears throat> Sauce Gardner, a guy who we've talked about countless times on our show, been extremely impressive as a rookie. He's currently PFF highest graded corner, lowest completion percentage allowed 41.1 percent as a primary defender in coverage this season. We get a chance to see Sauce versus Jettas. Justin Jefferson, Sauce Gardner matchup, man. I understand you talk about this all the time, being a fan of the game. Anytime there's an elite light corner opposite of you, you get a chance to really kind of d- d- dial in and watch. And what are you looking forward to see in this matchup, not knowing if Sauce will be following Justin the entire ball game, but it's safe to say they will line up opposite of each other in this yeah. ball game. What are you looking to see in this matchup? Um, man, first and foremost, I'm just intrigued and excited to see, you know, Sauce in person. You know, like you said, I'm a huge, huge fan of the game. Haven't had really many opportunities to really watch him, you know, throughout the year because, you know, I got to mm-hmm. do my my own thing, my own due diligence on, you know, um, you know, on understanding what teams want to do to me leading to that week. You know, but hearing the talks and, you know, seeing the stats and seeing the highlights, you know, that I see on ESPN look like he's having a, a very, very remarkable year. I just love his movements. Um, I love how how patient he hit, how patient he is at the line of scrimmage. Does a very good job of um just playing with confidence. You know, you mm-hmm. don't you don't see many young cornerbacks um coming to lead, play with a ton of confidence. And he's a guy that uh that's not afraid of the action, not afraid of the moment. And um it, it's just good to see quality play come into the league year after year after year, especially at the, the DB position for sure. Yeah. And, and the thing I love about Sauce as well, you talk about his athleticism, how patient he is, but he's extremely long. Yeah. I mean, it's safe to say he probably can scratch his knees standing straight up without bending yeah. down. That's how long his long as the arms are. And that's a great trait to have in regards to being able to touch wide receivers, you know, when you have that type of length in regards to your arms. So yeah. I guess that's going to be a five-star matchup between Sauce Gardner and Justin Jefferson. And let's see exactly how that plays out for four quarters. Man, before we get into my prediction, Pat P, I know every week you guys have a special celebration because you guys know you will create turnovers. It's safe to say. Uh, but can we get a special celebration? I don't know exactly where I'll be in the stadium, but in regards to having all things covered in the attendance, I'm pretty sure the guys know about your podcast and how – you know, you rock on the podcast. Is there something that we probably could do? And I'm I'm letting you know this now so you can start allowing your creative thoughts to surface and think about something in, in regards to celebration. Is there something that we probably can do in honor of having all things covered there live, broadcast there live from the stadium with, you, with your defensive, uh, uh, com, com, uh, defensive partners? Yeah, let me... Uh... 
Let me think about it, Mac. You know we haven't got a turnover in about two weeks, so yeah, been, yeah, well overdue. Yeah, well yeah, we've been sit, we've been sitting on um a couple of them for a while. So let me uh let me let me brainstorm a little bit over the next couple of days and see what I can come up with. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. And, and, and you're the senior of the group, so I mean your your word basically trumps everybody else in the locker room. And right. it's safe to say, you know, there's not. In regards to known Hall of Fame type potential players, you also the Hoffer in the group as well. So, you know, <laughs> it's safe to say whatever Pat P says should go. And before we before we let you go in regards to my pr- prediction coming up, can we get a preview of the swag? What, you, what, what are you rocking this Sunday? Because number one, your guy going to be in town and you know how I am. I'm always monitoring and looking at your uniform. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm keep it the same, Mac. The white been the, mic, okay. the white been keeping um being very very nice to me. I might change up the white cleats, but I'm going white sleeve and white uh white cleats for sure. Yeah, you got it. Yeah, but I was gonna say you can't wear black cleats with, with white sleeves and white gloves. Come on, Mac. I would never do that. Okay, okay. I'll just ask. <laughs> I'll just ask you now. You guys know what time it is. Prediction time. I got a good one for you guys, boy. No. Man, See, a can lot we get of people- a game? What you got? Over seven points, uh, over a touchdown, man. Let me get a number over a touchdown. Oh, no, I got my number already set, Pat P. All right, let me hear it. 29-27, Vikings win. God damn it. I like to win, but I'm I'm, 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 I'm tired of living on the edge, man. I'm I'm ready to whoop somebody. I'm sorry, Pat P. That's what came to my mind. So what's going to happen is this. This is what's going to happen. That last touchdown they scored to make it 27 is pretty much at the end of the game. Okay. Which is going to suck because the Vikings are now three-point favorites. And if they score at the end of the game, Pat P, if I took the Vikings giving three points, I lose. So y'all got to find a way to stop them from scoring that last touchdown. Y'all putting up 29 points. Yeah, for sure. So why won't you – I don't know how this goes with the – Every Viking win this season has been by one score or less. Yeah. That, that, yeah. So that that's happened. what came about. That it's been about one score or less. That's that's been y'all's consistent trend the entire year. I got you. So why won't you do this? If you go bet with the bet with us, I'm not saying go bet with us. I'm trying no, to No, what I'm gonna do is since I just but, gave this prediction and I thought about this, I'm gonna buy it down. So instead of that's taking what I was three, ask you. I'm gonna buy it down. Oh shoot. I gotta buy it down to one and a half if possible. If y'all win by two points. Yeah. So when, when, they, when they say, if someone says, like, um, I'm a money line to bet. That, that means you got to win straight up. There's straight no, there's up. no okay. points involved. Just, the Vikings gotcha. just got to win. Ah, uh, I got you. Okay. So I took y'all Thursday night. I took Detroit with the points. Clearly, they won. Mm. I took Dallas. And that last touchdown screwed me over with Dallas. Mm. That last touchdown they gave up screwed me over towards the end of the game, and you guys clearly cashed what in was big they, time. What was their favorite? Like, what were they favorite to win? I by? got Dallas at eight and a half. Ooh, they won by eight. <laughs> that, that last touchdown. Oh man, that sucked. The last touchdown. The last touchdown. Yes. So that's what happened. But my prediction is 29-27. I just need y'all not to give up that last touchdown to make things sticky. So you remember this now. Remember this moment. And when you're in the fourth quarter, y'all got a nine-point lead with a little under a minute left. They're going to score a garbage touchdown. And watch what you say to yourself. That boy Max said that. <laughs> <laughs> that boy Max said that. <laughs> that boy Max said that. And I'm going to be, wherever I'm going to be in the stadium, I don't know if they're going to have me sit up yet. I don't know. But I'm going to be hot. Because <laughs> if I can't buy it down to one and a half, I got to take it at three. And y'all give that touchdown in the game, boy. I'm going to be hot. But most importantly, the Vikings win. That's all that matters, right? That's all that matters, Coach. No question. Prediction, 29-27 Vikings win. They improved to 10-2, and two, and let's keep it rolling. Pat P, before we let you go, of course, you know how we do. We love to tap into, into what's going on around the league. Last weekend, a very, very entertaining weekend of football, starting with games on Thursday. Of course, it was Thanksgiving. Sunday was full-fledged. Same could be said for Monday. But two coaches went for two with the game on the line, and both both teams converted those week uh, the, uh, this week to win. Doug Peterson, Brandon Staley, what's your thoughts if your defense is trying to make that stop? What what are you thinking if you're on the bench and your coach your coach makes the call to go for two? Man, he's aggressive for one, and coach is ready to go home. <laughs> he's ready coach to go home, not- and. 
this is my thing. Being a former defender, I always want to defend every blade of grass. Right. You know, that's how I used to always think. But I feel like if there is a go-to play, two-point play that you think is golden, and you feel extremely com- confident in this play, run it. But then, you know, a lot yeah. of coaches, they just go for two, and you look at the play that they call, like, wait a minute, you could have kept it's, that. Yeah, yeah. Just kick the I field agree. goal. And one thing I hate about two-point opportunities, I hate when an offense, they call a sprint pass, and they minimize oh, oh my the field. Gosh. They shorten That's the good. field. I hate that, Pat P. I don't even like seeing sprint pass on anything, especially two-point conversions. Right. Yeah, I don't, you're, I don't like you're rolling seeing, out. I don't like seeing speed passes. You're rolling out to one side of the field. You're minimizing First the field. Play For play. us as defenders, that's what we want. Exactly. Because we don't have to cover a lot of space when you do that. Exactly. 100%. I agree with you. <laughs> Excuse me. I agree. I agree with you 100%. If you don't have a, a play that you a thousand percent sure. Yeah. That this, that this is a, a, a go-to play or a golden play. Yeah, go ahead and kick the field goal. And I'm with you. I'm a defensive player too. So I'm a, I'm always that's my that's my mindset as uh, as well. Make him snap it again. Make you know, him, make no him question. snap the ball again. And no question. Nowadays, you know, so many guys, the league has been changing over the years. I mean, that's what teams do nowadays. They just work on so many different answers of the game to where nothing goes unturned now. Like it's almost every other day you're working on a two minute play. I mean a two point mm-hmm. play. Every, you know, every Wednesday you open practice with a two minute drill, you know, so football now is just so much more situational, not saying that it hasn't been before, but it's so situational um, conscious now to where guys is uh, working on it relentlessly is almost like it's becoming like walking, you know, when you get out on the field, when that when that opportunity comes up, you already know what play you're going to call. You already know what hash you wanted on. You know what I mean? You're already ready for that moment because you went through it so many times. No question. I agree with you. So let's see, you know, if we see any two-point opportunities in regards to win the, winning the game this weekend in the NFL. Pat P, we're not trying to put you on the spot with your former team, but they just stay in the news. <laughs> They've been in, in the news a lot this year in regards to quarterback play, consistency, team just struggling, head coach concerns, blah, 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 blah. Do you think Cliff Kingsbury will be the scapegoat for the struggles they are having this year? They're currently 4-8, and eight, offense ranked 17th in the league. Kyler Murray said the offense is schematically effed. Basically mm-hmm. said their scheme sucks. And we had this conversation before, you know, with them giving the, the extension to uh, your best friend, Steve, Steve Kime, and uh, Cliff Kingsbury, Ooh. your best friend. Well... Huh? Hondo. I just had to do that. I'm wrong. <laughs> this is my bad. I got to grow up. I got to grow up. I thought it was your best friend. My fault. Y'all ain't homeboys. Okay. But in regards to the head coach, I have my I have my opinion about this situation. I want to hear yours first. About him you being think, a scapegoat? Yeah, you think Cliff Kingsbury may be the scapegoat in regards to their struggles? It ain't no maybe. He will. He will be. Yeah, yeah he will be. Uh huh. He will be. And the crazy thing about it, the guy who hired him will still have a job. Yep. It's, it's, it sounds about right. I, I initially I was thinking that they probably would stick with him because of the contractual agreement he has. But now just seeing how bad they've been, and they man, they start fired a coach after 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 a season, man. Yeah, and he signed he signed that extension last March. But see, just. Verbally now, vocally, Kyler Murray is talking about, and, and I don't like how he's doing that. I think he should keep some things privately, but it tells me he doesn't care about the head coach, his head coach. And he's putting everything on the head coach, basically saying. Kyler Murray don't care about nobody but Kyler Murray. <laughs> That's just a matter of the fact. Well, well, yeah, well, I, I got it. <laughs> so... <laughs> hey, I can't, I can't argue. That I don't know him personally. You played with him for a few years, so I got to take your word for it. But I can just tell you this much as a outsider looking in. I think in regards to keeping the dysfunction out. Those are things you don't say to the public. But as I stated earlier, when you don't care about an individual, you don't care what you say about that individual privately or in the public. So clearly, and we've seen him yell at Cliff Kingsbury 
in-game action, right? So I think Kyler Murray is basically saying, man, I'm ready to get this guy up out of here. And I think it's safe to say because of the contract they gave Kyler Murray, he has a lot of say-so within that organization. Which is so and- crazy because it's the same guy that y'all put in his contract. You got to study four hours a week. Yeah, and they removed it, but they had it in there initially. Correct. But the but the but the but the system messed up. But they they requiring you to study for four hours. But the system messed up. Yeah. And they had it in there. That was in there. You're right. You're right, my guy. So and we gotta see. On top of that, if you look at it, if you look at since Kyle been there, all the stats is comp- all the same. Records, all that is the same. It's a it's it's consistent. Yeah. Well, they, they're four and eight. They're on a bye week this week. Let's see what they have in store when they jump off the bye week. Hopefully they can turn things around. But I think if they don't, yeah, Cliff Kingsbury might be on the outside looking in and they could be looking for a new head coach. In other news, Lamar Jackson took to social media with some colorful language to respond to a critic. Do you ever feel like responding to haters on Twitter, Pat P? Do I feel like it? Do you ever feel like responding to haters sometimes on Twitter? Yeah, yeah, I feel like it sometimes. <laughs> but... <laughs> 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 all the time but at the end of the day what I come to realize is like man these people ain't gonna you know, make me lose any sleep I'm living good I eat good I ain't got no complaining in the world got one of the best jobs in America yeah. living out my dream they they, they want to be where I'm at you know, so, you know what you know what I, I want to I just go back into my thought, like, man, it's not even worth it. And I was going to ask you, what should NFL players be weary of in regards to responding to critic critics? Weary about nothing, because at the end of the day, the critic always going to be the right person or the athlete is always going to have to be the bigger person. You know, so yeah, you have to. There's nothing yeah. that an athlete should be. And, worried about. and I think NFL players need to know in any prominent individual with a huge role they live a fishbowl lifestyle so unfortunately you have people with an opinion say something about your performance or what you've done and it could bother you but you also got to realize there's one thing i'd like to say to our listeners and our viewers tuning in to us that's why i don't like watching football in sports bars and places where there are there's a lot of commentary going on Because it's hard for me to look at the game, watch the game, enjoy it as a fan. But then I'm hearing this person say, oh, man, I can't believe he dropped that. Oh, man. Oh, I could have made that throw. No, you could not have. <laughs> because if you could, you would be doing it. Right. You, you know you couldn't. That'd you be couldn't. Man, I could have made that throw. I could have made that tackle. No. I could have made that no. kick. Man, Shut old dude up, told me a long time ago, anybody can make the Pro Bowl from their couch. Right. <laughs> Just think about can. how many Pro Bowls you made from your couch. Man, it's not that easy, man. Respect the crowd. That's what Troy, I, man, my good teammate Troy Palomar used to always say, man, respect the crowd and respect the preparation that goes into what these guys are doing, regardless if you're on a good man. team, record-wise, or if you're on a bad team. You have to understand, it is hard to do what these guys are doing. Our job is no different. Your job is no different. My past job is no different than what you do nine to five. How would you feel if you're an accountant and we're sitting here seeing some of the mistakes you made number wise? And we and if we say, oh, man, how he made that mistake? I could have done that. I could have done better than that. Just think about how disrespectful that is to that accountant who's prepped almost their entire life for that role. And they have that role, but they made a few minor mistakes here and there that was visible for all of us to see. Yep. You've been playing a game of football your entire life. You've been prepped to cover people. The same can be said for me. I was prepped to cover people. Every game you step out, you're not going to have your best game. People right. going to catch passes on you. People going to make you miss tackles. You're going to lose contain. It happens. No doubt about it. So for those naysayers or critics that say, I can't believe he did that. I No, you could not do it. <laughs> he said no. No, you couldn't do it because you could. If, if someone could pay you a million dollars or a few million dollars to go out here and tackle somebody, if you were good enough to do it, you would be getting paid also. No doubt about it. Hands down. <laughs> so just be mindful. Because one thing I understand, too, as a fan now, being retired from the game for some years, fans get all the way involved in the game. Mm-hmm. They get extremely invested. They, coaches. They, they get they, they coaches. get invested. They coaches. They get all the way invested. <laughs> and I love that passion. 
from fans. I really do. But right. fans must understand and remember as well. You're not you, you you never will be more invested than the players that are playing. And that's where they got to come to a, real, a realization with themselves. <laughs> like, you would never be more. I don't care how much money you pay for a ticket. You would never be more invested than a no. player into the game. Period. No, no. Because what the I guys love the fans, do. I love their passion as well, but. Yeah. yeah. I love the passion. I, I love the passion. And I, every fan is not like that. But then you have some fans like, you know, the guy who came at Lamar Jackson and, and said what he said. It wasn't all the way directed at Lamar Jackson, but just basically saying, you know, he, he needs some help. He can't do it by himself. And the Ravens, do they, they need to help him out. But some fans just be extremely disrespectful in their commentary to what they see. And like I said, that's why sometimes I can't really watch the game around people because I'm like, oh, they kept, they're so, they're so critical. And they analyze, oh, how did he miss that tackle? Wait a minute. He's playing against another person who's the best in the world at what he does. Right. This man is considered the best in the world at what he does. So let's say if you're a freaking lawyer, right? You're a defense attorney. You're going against another attorney who's the best in the world. Their points might be a little more better than your points. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? So it happens. It's a, it's a tongue of war uh, affair. That's why Dick LeBeau used to tell us all the time, Pat P, sometimes the bear gets you. Sometimes, sometimes you get the bear, sometimes the bear gets you. Yep. But in my, our profession, what keeps you around, if you get the bear more than the bear gets you. 100%. That's it. That's it. That's how it is, man. So, hey, Pat P, you a vet. You know how to handle critics. And uh, keep doing what you're doing because they can't be too critical of your play this year because you've been on fire. Yes, sir. That boy is on fire. That was Alicia Keys' song, by the way, wasn't it? It is Alicia Keys. I was on scene. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, hey, Pat P, man, let's go. We got the Jets. Hey, what the weather? Oh, never mind. I was going to ask how the weather going to be. I know. I hope and I ain't we just snow. had a freaking snowstorm today, so it ain't gonna be snowing when you get here. Hope, that's what it says on the um, on the temperature so for forecast throughout the week. So Sunday, I think it said it's. I'll tell you right now, Sunday weather is supposed to be man it's snowing cats and dogs right now, man. Yeah, yeah, it's okay to snow right now, but what's what Saturday and Sunday? Sunday, like? oh, it's Saturday is snowing, forty percent, forty. Sunday, low is 11, high is 34. The low 11? Yeah. But if the sun out, they probably ain't going to feel like that. All right. It'll be all right, baby. All right. Well, we're going to see. Show on the road, baby. We on the road, baby. We here. We here. Flights book, room book. Man, let's go. Tickets there, credentials. I'm there, man. I'm in the stadium, man. I'm going to have my seven on. My seven on. Let's go rock and roll, Pat P. Go get you one now. Go Got get you, you one. Man, go. if you get a pick, I need the ball. Done. Don't throw the ball away because I know you done picked a whole lot. Do you catch it? Do you keep all the footballs you pick? Oh, yeah. Well, can you give me this one? Only through, only, I don't. I just don't have one of my footballs, and it was the football I threw in the stands against the Cleveland Browns in 2000. Oh, yeah, yeah. That was in Arizona. I remember you did that. Yeah. yeah That's I, the only I, interception ball I don't have. So I got 31 of them. Well, can I get can I get 30, 30, 33? Because you, yes, you, you caught 32, but you threw that away. Yeah. Can I get 33 for Sunday? Now, if you yes, catch two, just give me one. Give me the first one. Gotcha. Yeah, I hear it. And then what I'm going to do is, because we're speaking this into existence, that's what we do. Mm-hmm. I will have the football here next week for our episode, and he going to sign it for me. Yeah. Dun, da, da. That's what we got. And we got a celebration in favor, in part of to to celebrate all things covered in Minnesota. Man, I'm a Minnesotian. Is that is that is that what they say? Uh, I don't know, Matt. I don't know. I just created that, but it sounds good. <laughs> <They should. laughs> Minnesotian. All right, hey Pat P. Listen, see when I see you. I see you Saturday. Let's go Vikings. Go Nation. Stand yes, up. Let's go.